Oh, uh, my name is Clem Messerly. I'm actually in the Midwest in Iowa, and I work with uh, web security and identity management. Um, so what I'm going to show today is uh, basically just uh, being able to tap into um, SSL Labs. And for those that maybe aren't familiar with it, um, on the other screen. Uh, um, this is the uh, a typical SSL labs and it's a free open source online site that you can use. Um, it does have a few limitations. You can only test like 443 sites um, and you have to use the FQDN. You can't test by IP address. Um, but uh, this is sort of a, a typical uh, grade score. Um, and we use this a lot to kind of baseline some of our external sites to make sure that our TLS um, settings, uh, Cypher suites, things like that are OK. Um, I'm showing what will become uh, the future blog spot. Um, last week, I just got uh, Hugo working um, so that I can start doing some blogging and, and try and give back to the community. Um, so there will be more content coming here. Right now, you can obviously see I have uh, just the hello world. Um, but uh, back to the code um, function. Uh, basically, um, what I like to do is I like to take the parameters that the API uh, provides um, and make sure that I can pass those in and override them as a function. Um, <clears throat> most of the time, I will leave these as the default to what they have. Uh, you can see that within their API, you can set a sleep timer, um, a max age if you want to, if you're okay grabbing like cache results. Uh, let's say somebody has scanned uh, that site in the last hour. <clears throat> if I run the, the API call, um, it's not gonna run it a, a fresh scan, it'll just use the cache data and you can override that. Um, publish um, is whether you wanna put it on their site as a public site, um, publish on and off, pretty uh, straightforward. Um, start new uh, is a switch to, um, and I passed it in as a string just because that's what their API is, is expecting, but it's basically a switch to uh, tell uh, the SSL Labs API whether or not you want to force a fresh scan, even if it's within the new max age uh, that you may have set or that may be cached. Um, and then basically inside of here, I set a counter so that if I pass in a verbose, um, I can sort of watch in the background. Uh, and I've got a, a separate function that's called disable screen lock. Uh, and I'll just have this sitting on a second monitor. Um, I'll kick off the disable screen lock and let it run. It, it, runs a uh, PowerShell script that just mimics some uh, keystrokes to keep my screen from going to sleep. And I can kind of watch this in the background while it, it iterates through the different sites. Uh, hits the uh, API. Um, and then on the first request, um, there is a start new equals um, flag. Uh, they, the API, they only want you to do that the first time. And then after that, they want you to just query uh, intermittently for the results. So I go ahead and I do that down here in a while loop. Um, and within the API, when you call it, um, the first time I'll set uh, a sleep timer, wait 10 seconds, um, start the while loop. And then I'm looking for a response code uh, of ready, which will come back from the API function. If I don't get that uh, back, I'll go ahead and set the sleep timer for another 10 seconds or whatever value you want to pass in. Um, and then eventually, once I get that, or if I get an error, I'll break out of the loop so that it doesn't go into an infinite loop. <clears throat> once I get it back, I get the response. Uh, I take that response. And in the case of some sites, um, especially if they're hosted in Amazon uh, or any of the cloud providers, you may have multiple endpoints that come back. Um, I really only care about one one of them because um, generally they're all going to return the same grade. Um, so I just grab the, the first one out of here, uh, and then I start grabbing uh, individual pieces that uh, you know our company finds useful or that that I find interesting. I want to see the list of protocols, the cipher suites, um, certificate revocation status um, within their API. There's there's certain codes. So I map those up with a switch statement, and based on what I get back in the in the response, I'll set that to a more reader friendly 
um, when I pass it into the to the export file. Um, <clears throat> and I'm doing all of this as a list as opposed to an array, um, just from a, a generic list perspective um, to try and make it a little bit more efficient. Um, and down here, um, the API returns epoch time or epoch time, uh, depending on how you want to pronounce. So I, I convert those over to, uh, to date times that I can read. Um, join all this together. Uh, and then basically, once I have my, my final result set, I can um, send that back and in the function response itself. Or like I show here in an example, <clears throat> excuse me, I can pipe that over to an Excel file and have this be part of a, a larger script um, where I'm combining this to, say, a workflow where I, I take the results and set those up in a universal dashboard for like um, grade reports uh, and TLS reports, uh, things of that nature, which I won't really show today, but um, the raw data when it comes back, after I put it into CSV, um, you can see kind of a general sense of what the data will look, will look like. Um, here are those date times that got converted um, into central time for me. Um, the protocols that I want to see if there's any sites that are not running um, that are not TLS 1.2 only, because uh, that's one of the, the things that we try to, uh, to restrict. Uh, here I'm running them against a couple of my personal sites. Uh, I happen to do sports photography on the side. So these are the domains that I own. Um, so I just test it against them. And then again, the, the Cypher suites, I, I combine those with a join statement um, so that it's easier to dump them into a single column. Um, if I need to break these out later um, to do any sort of reporting, I can just do a simple split, um, which is kind of how I'm doing it today. And there's two different grades that come back from SSL Labs. There's uh, the standard grade. And then uh, for some sites, if they're running a mismatched certificate, um, or if it's an expired certificate, um, you may uh, want to see what those look like. Um, so that's this trust ignored. Uh, so I grab both of those results and kind of query against both of them. Um, as far as the data, I won't make you guys sit through watching it. Um, so I queued it up, and this is kind of what it looks like um, if you were to run it. Um, I'm just going to set a variable and then I pass the function. Um, this can be a single domain or I can grab a list of domains out of a text file, um, set my flags, and then when I generally run these in the background, I'll, I'll turn the verbose on. So like I said, I can watch if it's one of one, one of 20, one of uh, two of 20, um, and then it just basically goes through and it, it iterates, um, checks. If it's not ready, it will continue to check until it finally gets to the status of uh, ready. Uh, and then it'll move on to the next one. Um, so that's basically all I have.